Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and magnify the Lord with me. Exalt his name. Hallelujah. For he is great and he's great me to be praised. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Is that your story? Hallelujah. Do you agree? Hallelujah. Yes. That you want to bless them at all times? Yeah. Because he is worthy in the good and the bad and the happy, the sad, when yes. you're up, when you're down, when nobody's around. Amen? Amen. We give God the praise. He is so good. Yes. And I thank of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me. My heart cry what? Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. It feels good to feel good. You know that? Yeah. Hallelujah. To have joy and peace and laughter. It feels so good that other men way down. No, I want to have the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So God, however you do it, you just Hallelujah. do it for us. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Today is a blessed day. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's a blessed, blessed day. And I'm just going to go ahead and open this up in prayer. If that's all right. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. we bless your name, oh God. We praise yes, you, Father. Lord. We give your name the glory. We exalt you. We welcome your presence, oh Holy One, oh Righteous One. Oh God, for there's none like you in all the earth, oh God. Yes. We give glory to your name and worship and honor to your name and praise to you, Lord God. Hallelujah. For just being who you are, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Nothing and no one compares to you, oh God. If we had a thousand tongues, we could not praise you enough, Lord God. Yes. What can we render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for us. Hallelujah. Yes. We don't have anything but ourselves to give you, Lord God. Our worship and our praise. So, Father, Thank take you. it, Lord God. All that we have and all that we are, we give it all to you, God, yes. in the name yes. of Jesus. And, Father, forgive us of our sins, yes. even down to the thought process. Yes. Touch us in our hearts and our minds, Lord God. Uproot and uplift everything that's not of your kingdom. Yes, sir, Anything Father. that will grieve the Holy Spirit, oh God. Anything, Lord God, that would grieve you, Lord. We, we don't want to do it, Lord God. We want to be cleansed and purged, Lord God. And Father, those that don't have a heart of repentance, we ask for a heart of repentance on your people today, Lord God. Yes. They will turn away from sin and want to be forgiven, Lord God, to forgive others. If there's any unforgiveness in our heart, Lord God, cleanse us from it. Expose it. Show us, Lord God, yes, that we may know how to pray for ourselves, Lord God, and say, God, we don't want it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Give us our hearts to surrender to your will and to your way, Father, because yes. you know all, you see all, and from you are all things, Lord God. You know what's yes. best for our lives, Lord God. Yes. So let us want to see it from your way in the name of Jesus. Yahweh. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. And Father, we ask that you have your way in this service today, Lord God. Touch the man of God as he bring forth the bread of life, Lord God. Touch uh, Kenyatta as she come forth with a word, Lord God. Thank you for what you're doing in the saints today. Lord God, yes. we are excited. Hallelujah. Yes. About the manifestation of your glory and about, oh God, how you are raising up people such as a time as this, Lord God. Yes, uh, Lord. Thinking about the millennials, Lord God. And how uh, we got the Joshua generation coming up, Lord. We are so thankful and so grateful for what you're doing, Father God. Yes. This is an awesome time, Lord God. And we just pray for healing and restoration, regeneration, rejuvenation, Lord God. A fresh out point of your spirit, oh God. Oh God, you be glorified, you be lifted high. And we find yes, anything yeah. that's not of your kingdom, the anything, Lord Jesus. God, that come to distract us, steal, kill, and destroy, yes, Lord God. Lord. That your worship up. be pleasing to your ears, oh God. And yes, you have Father. your way, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We also lift up this nation. We lift up the nation. We lift up the world yes, to you, Lord. Lord God. We pray yes. for salvation, oh God. We lift up those that are lost, oh God, yes, oh God, oh God, yes, oh God. Yes, God. Yes, Reveal yes. yourself unto them, Lord yes, God. Lord. He says, I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. Let you be lifted, that they be drawn in the name of Jesus. That you have been lifted. You've been resurrected, oh God. Yes. Hallelujah. You've been drawn. Yes. So we thank you, Father God. Pray for the sick and the afflicted, Lord God. Bind it up in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Pray for divine healing from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord God. Whatever it is, Lord God, we give it to you. We declare that it's finished. Yes. Already done. Yes, Lord. God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some, yeah. some praise. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, we've been doing the, uh, the Daniel fast. We are on day 15 for those that have been with us um, doing this fast. And we are having an awesome time on this fast. God is revealing. God is doing some new things. He is speaking and he is raising up some people, Lord God, giving yeah. divine revelation, understanding and wisdom. And we just thank God for it. So uh, we're going to have uh, Prophetess Kenyatta come up and share some things with us this morning. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. We're praying for as she comes forth.
praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, so first, I must <laughs> um, get y'all my little mini word. Then I'm going to tell y'all this dream I had. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell you a prayer first before I start. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Um, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this day, God. We thank you for giving us a new day to repent, oh God, another day to seek your face, Lord, another day to do whatever it is for you to do. Whatever it is that you see fit for us to do on this day, God, we thank you for the word. We thank you for your word, God. We thank you for dreams, God. We thank you for greater anointing. We thank you for revelation. We thank you for your spirit that you're going to pour out on us, Lord, on these days to come, God. We thank you for the people that are coming in, Lord, in the future. We thank you for the people that are going to come test us, that's going to come into your kingdom. And we just thank you, God. Bind up any distractions, God. And we just bless you for this word that you have given me. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, so I'm going to bounce around a little bit, but... Just bear with me. Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to tell y'all. First, I'm going to go to um, Daniel chapter 3 and verse 1 through 6. Daniel 3, 1 through 6. Excuse me, y'all. I'll be nervous talking in front of people. It's okay. 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 Okay, so, y'all got it? Amen, glory to God. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was three some cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dora, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces. To come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of provinces were gathered together into the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Mm -hmm. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then Herod cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound, the cornet, the flute, Heart, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Mm-hmm. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, he shall the same hour be cast into the midst of burning, fiery furnace. Yes. And so, basically, Nebuchadnezzar had made a false god, and he called for everybody to come. He commanded, it was a commandment, like you have to do this, that everybody would come and worship. So if you go down into chapter, um, I mean verse, okay, verse 11 and 12, oh wait, verse 10 to 12, mm-hmm. somebody basically came into the king and said, hey king, they were snitching, like king, we know that you said, like, if they don't come down, they don't bow down, you won't cast them into the fire. Here's these three boys that are not worship me. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Nebuchadnezzar then called for Meshach, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and basically told them, I'm going to give you one more chance to bow down. And if you don't bow down, I'm going to kill you. Then what God going to tell you? And their response was, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> we will, it, like, we know that God can deliver us. And even if he don't, we will still not bow down. Amen. And sometimes it's going to be things, it's going to be our friends, it's going to be our family members that are going to be trying to get us to do stuff. And then they're going to try to, like, yeah, I'm going to just give you one more chance. Like, you're not cool, you're not cool. And you got to have that mindset that, you know, God is able. And even if he don't, I'm still going to worship you. And I'm going to show you how, I'm going to give you three instances and in when. People were given a chance to bow, and they didn't, and God promoted them. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, as I told y'all, they had the chance to bow down. That's right. They didn't. And so, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar in verses, uh, verses, twenty in uh, chapter, my bad, y'all. Chapter three, verses, um. 
20. He said, and he commanded the most mighty men. So he wanted the strongest men. He wanted the most strongest men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats and hosting, their hoses and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of fire slew those men mm -hmm. that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So look, the same people that's going to be trying to destroy you, that's going to be trying to kill you, that's going to be trying to degrade you, yeah. they're going to be destroyed right in the midst of that. Yeah. And it says, yeah. and uh, going to um, verse 24, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of this fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and in the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. So that's saying, listen, you didn't bow. Not only was God in the midst of them in a fire, but he brought them out with no type of harm. Yeah. And see what happened when they didn't bow? Yeah, yeah, right here right. in verse, um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, y'all. Take your time. It's okay. It says, um, uh, in verse 28, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his service and trusted in him, and has entrusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Mm. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut into their houses and shall be made their house shall be made dunkier. There is no other god that can deliver out of this sort. So he recognized that nobody can get you out of the fire. Nobody but God, That's right. but the Almighty, Hallelujah. but the living God can go with you through fire, that can go through you with hell, bring you out with nothing going on. You don't even look like you went through the fire. Yeah. Anybody speak bad about him? Y'all gonna die. <laughs> Amen. And then, look, they was promoted. It says, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Now go with me because a bow does not have to be physical. Go with me to Daniel chapter 1. I'm going back. Amen. Daniel chapter 1. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah came, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Jerusalem and besieged him. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king unto his... Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to read that part. I'm going to read... Uh, bear with me, y'all. Bear with me. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, verse 5, it says, And the king appointed them a daily provision of king's meat and of wine, which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now amongst these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, which is pretty much Mishael, Shadrach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. And to him the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto them Daniel, the name of Belshazzar, and Hananiah of Shadrach, and, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel proposed to his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the prince of the Enoch that he might not defile himself. Again, that's the point where they did not bow to what the king wanted to do. The king said, eat the meat and drink the wine. <laughs> and they said, we're not going to do that. We're not going right. to defile ourselves. That's not what our God wanted us to do. Now go into um, to verse. Uh, okay, so basically, I'm going to read the whole verse. But basically, the king had a dream, right? And, well, no, I'm sorry, y'all. But basically, after they they went on a ten day phase. After the ten they, after the ten day phase, Meshach, Shamrock, and Abednego, they had all understanding. So they had all literally the word says all right. understanding. So Amen. they had understanding. They had wisdom. And they were smarter than all the astrologers, all the people that the the, the warlocks and witches, basically. That's, right. that's what I call Amen. them. And go into chapter two, in which um basically in chapter two, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he went to go seek the warlocks. That's what I put in my word. I don't feel like writing all the astrologers. They warlocks. Because <laughs> yeah, they not right. God, they warlocks <laughs> and witches. That's he right. went to them and they didn't have any wisdom. They didn't know how to 
like interpret the dream. That's right. But he remembered that Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego went on a fast and they were submitted to God and they had all wisdom and understanding. And so basically he went to Daniel. Daniel was able to interpret the dream because he was a man of God. And if you look here in verse um Verse um, 47 of chapter 2, I believe. Well, first, verse 46. It says, Then Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, O truth, uh, o truth of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of governors and all the wives of men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the kings, he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs and promises of Babylon. And Daniel said in the gate. That's another instance of when you didn't bow and God promoted you. That's right. Because you were set in a position. And the third time of when people did not, a person didn't bow and promote it, I'm going to go to... Esther. And in Esther, there's a man named Mordecai, who is Esther's uncle. And so there's a man named um, Haman. And Haman was pretty much greedy and he just, he thought he was better than him. And so he kind of tricked the king into promoting him. But it says that Morde Haman wanted the people to bow to him. And Mordecai did not bow to him because mm -hmm. he ain't God. Like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Right. That's what <laughs> it's a, oh, that was, um, Hagen was promoted in chapter three. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm scared to talk in front of people. Thank you. <laughs> well, Hagen was promoted because um, he wanted everybody to bow to him. Mordecai was not bowing to him. So that's another thing. Everybody else is bowing to him. So another thing I want to tell y'all, when everybody else around y'all is bowing and is saying, oh, we're going to just drink. You don't have to drink. You don't have to smoke. You don't have to party. You don't have to bow to these things. God is looking at you, and he's going to promote you because that's you right. follow his Amen. word. Amen. Amen. And so Haman was, okay, so Haman was mad that, um, that Mordecai did not bow to him. And so he set out to destroy all of the Jews. But I'm going to show y'all how Esther was put in position, okay? And so was Mordecai. Because in chapter 2, there was two men that set to kill the king. But Mordecai overheard it. And so he went to warn the king. And so basically in chapter 3, um, like because he was warned, the king wanted to reward him. Like, oh my God, you saved my life. Some people might not like the king. You then took my people. He could have easily been like, yeah, like let him kill the king. That's right. But because God had already changed his heart and positioned him, he put him there specifically to hear that so mm -hmm. that he can warn the king. And he was blessed. And then look, Haman had to take Mordecai around and let everybody else bow to him. That's you right. see how the, <laughs> he set up a table in the presence of your enemies. Um basically Haman sought out to destroy the um the Jews, but because Esther and Hain and because <laughs> Esther and Mordecai was in position, they was able to not only debut Haman, he was he was killed. And if you look in chapter um the final chapter of Esther, I'm sorry y'all. Basically, Mordecai was promoted. He became the right-hand man. And his people was promoted as well. So that was basically, don't abandon your bow. I mean, abandon your bow. Don't bow. Don't fall for the tricks. Don't fall for what your friends doing. Don't fall for what your family doing. Stand for God and watch how God promotes you and puts you in position to bring other people up. Amen. Yes, Amen. 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 And so I don't know how I could see outside. I could see outside. It was this dark car that just was 
riding down the block. And I was like, something is not right with this car. Something is going on. Which way do I go? Do I go upstairs or do I go downstairs? That's what I was thinking to myself. I'm like, I'm going, I'm going to go upstairs. So I went upstairs and the person that was in the car, he got in the house somehow. And so I went to text my friend like, look, this dude is in the house. But before I could do that, I had already killed the man. But I couldn't see his face. He was dark. And so I was standing like this and to like this side of me, the sky cracked. And it was so white. And it was this, I'm going to say it was Jesus. He was riding this white horse. I never seen a horse so white in my life. Mm. He was riding. The sky was so pretty. He was riding. Like these words was coming to me. And it was like, do not be afraid. I have called you for a time such as this. And it was other words. And I can't remember. And I was worshiping. I was reading the words. I was speaking in tongues. And the girl was like, well, what's going on with her? And my sister was like, just be quiet. She in the spirit. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like reading the words. I was crying. I was like, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And I was worshiping. I was speaking in tongues. I was praying. And then I went to try to go call Pastor Zadina to tell her what happened to Brandon. I was so excited of what I seen. I couldn't get out, you know, get out what I seen. And then I woke up. And I was mad because I don't remember all the words that the Lord had said. Mm -hmm. One thing I do remember is him saying, do not be afraid who I called you for a time such as this. Right. And he's coming. So be prepared. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We so proud spiritual parents over here. Amen. Oh, praise God for the word. That was powerful, Prophetess Kenyatta. And the Lord said dedication brings elevation, and he's elevating you. Amen. You have been elevated. Amen. And in her dream, um, she's going to see some things that's going to come down her street that's going to even try to get close. But she had a word in her hand, and that, the word of the Lord the full armor, you know, the word of God is her sword. And that's what she probably prayed against that thing before she could even get to it. She had already killed it by the word that she was holding the word. Amen? Amen. And the Lord is telling her, some things are going to come. Even come down your street. Even come down near your door. Amen? But I called you for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we thank and praise God for that. Thank you for your dedication, even on the fast, and the best is yet to come. Greater is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise and a round of applause for the word that he has given to her because she is uh, in a place of ministering. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And bowing down. Glory to God. That was a powerful word. Amen. Amen. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord as we worship. And the funny thing about it was the Lord had given me two songs, uh, and hallelujah, that would even uh, go with what she was just saying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. She said, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Hallelujah. And yes, you saw Jesus. 